Welcome back, everybody. Now, you might have tuned in and be wondering, Rich, you've got your hood up, your glasses on, are you going out on the rob? I'm not, I promise. It's the morning after I've just done 189 miles, and I'll be a little tired, I'll be honest with you. So I'm gonna run through with you quickly all the kit and the bike and equipment that I used to get me through this two-day epic from going one side of the country to the other. For this most epic of challenges, we kindly had the support of three great brands on board, Garmin, Orbea, and Gore, all providing some of the best kit that they had. So let's take a look. Let's start with the bicycle then. My Orbea Oys M Pro TR, I'm rather the size large. <laughs> Those big hiker bikes were made so much more bearable by having such a lightweight bike from Orbea. Coming in at approximately 11 kilograms, that's with empty bottles and cages, Garmin and lights and mounts, plus the saddlebag with its bits. That's pretty bloomin' featherweight. I've gone for the TR version over the normal XC model because, well, it's got 20 mil extra travel front and rear, so it's just got that little bit more cushioning, so it's gonna make those big long days that little bit more comfortable, which it did. The progressive geometry made the ride back down not just bearable, but fun, which is always a bonus and incredible for such a lightweight cross-country bike. It's got a Fox Stepcast 34, so light and stiff. Uh, 120 mil at the back and both are controlled by the Squidlock lockout lever which I used a lot switching from trail to open to closed mode all the time. Made it great for when those road sections did come up I could lock it out completely to be the most efficient. Tyres this bike did have on it the Maxxis Recons which were just a little bit not they just weren't grippy enough really for the wet weather and wet conditions that uh, it can get up here. It can still be very boggy, so I swapped those out for the Ardent Races, something just a little bit grippier, but still rolls nice and quickly. 29, 2.35s in a 3C compound, so plenty of grip. Up front, we got the cockpit then, and that is where a lot of the business deal happened, certainly getting me through it and knowing what I was doing. I opted to use the Garmin Edge 1030 Plus, not just because of its massive battery life, a battery life of 24 hours, which I put to the test thoroughly, running it down to 2%, but also for the large amount of features it has, like Climb Pro, which let me know the severity and distance of the climb. I use this in conjunction with heart rate to pace myself, and if I wanted to go one step further, I could even pair it to a power meter as well. It also has what Garmin call Live Track, which is a great way of sharing where you are in real time, so that if any problems occur, someone can come to your aid when you're in somewhere as vast as the Lake District, this really could pay dividends. Finally, on the performance front, as I did have it hooked up to my Garmin heart rate strap, it'd also monitor how many calories I'd burnt and how much liquid I'd consumed, and prompt me every time I needed a top up. This was mega helpful as when you're in the zone, you often forget to take on food and water. So these little reminders were really helpful. I did have an external battery pack that as well that mounts under that out front Garmin mount as well, should the worst case scenario and uh, it run out completely, but I had faith in it and it actually lasted 26 hours. So that was amazing. I've also got the mount for the exposure uh, light where obviously with the really early mornings and long days, better to be safe than sorry in the mornings. And I did need it. I had the six pack out front. I actually also had a Diablo mounted to the head and you can see uh, a small exposure rear light as well. So that was good. Group set is full XTR race throughout, so carbon brakes, uh, big old 1051 cassette out the back, and given the nature of this ride, it was very hilly. Going through the Lake District especially with some very, 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 very steep climbs. So I went from a 34 tooth chainring, which is what I normally run, and went down to a 32 tooth just to give me those that extra gear and that extra ratio to try and get me up the steep stuff. Dropper post 125, I don't need to drop it any lower than that. Tie pedals, carbon bottle cages, I like to try and keep it as light as possible. Rotors, 160 out back, 180 up front, just a little bit more power up the front as well. What else we got? Carbon wheels, on bike essentials then. So, double bottles. I was out on my own for up to about four or five hours at a time, so double bottling was the way to go, just to make sure I had enough liquids on board at all time gotta be hydrated when you you know halfway up a mountain or at the top even there ain't no corner shops around to be stocking up tube strapped in the middle topic pump here because you can have canisters but you once you've used all the canisters well how are you going to inflate a tire so definitely a mini pump there and a saddlebag 
not the most conventional or nicest looking thing I know sometimes, but actually a saddlebag with those essentials in. So we'll run through what's in there in a minute, but there was multi-tool amongst other things. Foam grips, it's a long time holding on. I think, you know, 10, 11 hour days. So when you're just gripping for 10, 11 hours, if you can take all those small vibrations out of the ground, well then, that's the way to do it. Let's get down to some nitty gritty numbers then and talk setup. Tire setup, well, it's 27 PSI out front, 29 out back. No inserts, again, to keep the weight down, but to keep the rolling speeds high, some nice firm tires. On the suspension, however, what I did go is run it about 10 PSI softer in the front and the rear. So the front's running actually about 65, the rear is about 155, 160. And I took a token out of the front as well, so the suspension remains a little bit more linear and just goes through all its travel rather than ramping up. Purely just for comfort, it's a long day again, like I said. So, whereas on my normal bikes, race bikes, I'd run them quite firm, especially the enduro bikes, and I'd have them ramping up quite high, I wanted to sort of maximize the suspension and make it useful here for, for this, just absorbing all the little bumps. So that's, that's what I did for that. Uh, and it seemed to work. I had the bike two weeks roughly before this challenge, so it did give me time to get the saddle height right, saddle tilt correct, bar width, stem length, just getting all the riding positions key. I'd really, really recommend, if you're gonna think of doing something like this, the coast to coast or any other big long ride, that you really take the time to dial in your ride comfort. When you're spending four or five hours plus in the saddle, the kit you're in plays a huge role in how your day's gonna go. So which is why I chose Gore's finest C5 range. Designed to be close fitting, but not overly tight like XC Lycra or baggy like a set of enduro shorts. It's cut for comfort and the materials used are second to none. Designed for such endurance rides, maximizing breathability, flex and being lightweight, all whilst minimizing chafing and getting sweaty and grim, letting you focus on the task in hand. C5 Gore-Tex Infinium hybrid hooded jacket as well, which really was worth its weight in gold, as it had waterproof panels where you needed them to protect you against showers. However, the rest of the jacket was made of a breathable fabric, so I didn't overheat. Plus it came with a hood, which was handy a few times. Again, in a slim fit, it meant over the course of the day, you weren't wasting energy peddling around wearing a big old sail. Pock Ventral Air Spin Helmet. I opted for an XC style helmet as this was lightweight and again breathable, keeping me optimum temperature throughout the whole long day's riding. I also had Crave Clarity glasses by Pock as well, just keeping that mud out my eyes. And we all know it, I'm a fan of the disco slipper, so physics shoes on the bottom. Lightweight, stiff, maximum power, comfy for spending all day in. So what were the essentials I carried in my little saddlebag? Well, there was a Topeak Alien multi-tool which had pretty much everything you could need to fix anything on it. I also had some Topeak tyre levers, a couple of zip ties because, well, there's nothing you can't fix with zip ties. I had a little Leatherman multi-tool with pliers on it because, well, it's also a bonus little tool to have and it doesn't take up much space. Along with that, some Park Tool tubeless tyre patches and puncture repair pre-glued patches for minimum faff as well. All rolled up into a nice little bag tucked under there under the saddle. If you're looking at putting in some mega rides there and want the very best kit, then all of the stuff that I've used is available to buy. The Orbea Oise M Pro TR retails for £5,000, whilst the Gore C5 Gore-Tex Infinium Hybrid Hooded Jacket will set you back £200. Both worth their weight in gold, like I said, and very good purchases, I can promise you. The Gore C5 Trail shorts and jersey are 90 and 70 pounds respectively, whilst the Garmin Edge 1030 Plus comes in at 520 pounds. And if you think you can outlast that massive 24 hour battery life, which I actually pushed to 26 hours, well then the Garmin Power Pack, also available at 120 pounds, will double that battery life. Good luck if you think you can last that long. Fair play to you. That's it for my kit check. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been really helpful and it inspires you to get out and do some absolute epic rides, no matter what the distance. Please don't forget, like and subscribe the channel and I look forward to welcoming you back next time. Happy riding, everyone.